Good evening and thanks for joining us on uh, today's edition of the program National Talk. Uh, this is coming your way from ECWA TV Africa. I am alone today on set and my name is uh, Donald Weze. Tonight I have uh, two gentlemen who will be sharing their thoughts and uh, talking to us and uh, uh, laying the cards on the, on the table so we can find a common ground in the direction that we would go. I will start off with a quotation from the Bible, and that is in the book of Amos at chapter 3. It says, can two work together unless they are in agreement? Praise the Lord for that kind of a verse in the Bible, because tonight I have the president of the South, Southern Kaduna People's Union, popularly, uh, popularly known as uh, Sokapu, in the person of uh, Honorable Jonathan Asaki. So you're welcome to the studio. My pleasure. I also have His Excellency Architect Yusuf Barnabas Bala, the immediate past Deputy Governor of Kaduna State. Your Excellency, you're welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Viewers, the two gentlemen come from a common geographical location, and that is the southern Kaduna, uh, the southern parts of Kaduna State. Now, uh, we are going to go straight into our discussion. Uh, one hour is not going to be enough for us to talk uh, as much as we would want to talk, but we're going to make sure that we can get as much as is possible for you so you can understand how far we have come. At 7.30, we shall open the lines so that we will receive only but three calls. Tonight, only three calls. And if you are going to be the lucky person to get through to us, make sure your phone is uh, away from your TV set. And uh, the volume should also be very, very low. That way we will have uh, quality conversation with you. Remember... At 7.30, the lines will be opened, and we shall accommodate only three questions or three contributions. Secondly, I urge you to go straight to the point. We are going to be civil on this platform. This is a Christian station, and therefore, if you get to call in, please let your language be civil and go straight to the point. You will be allowed only one minute to contribute in this discussion. Once again, Your Excellency and Honorable, you are welcome to the studios. Thank you. I start off from yesterday. Uh, let me take off from this uh, statement. Uh, the president of Sokapu made a statement last night when you were on this platform. You said, so far, as far as you are concerned, at the time that you took over as president of Sokapu, you have not heard or seen any invitation or any correspondence from His Excellency so that you can talk one-on-one, -on -one, that is, or the association, Sokapu, and himself in his position as Deputy Governor. So we're going to take off from there. Sir, can you continue? Yeah, that's right. It was in this studio that I heard that His Excellency, the former Deputy Governor, had uh, said he had requested audience with Sokapu or something like that. And uh, I said, indeed, if it is with the past, with my predecessor, mm. I have not been told that. But since we came in, this is about six months now, mm. we have not got such invitation from him. Mm. And so thank God he's here. I, he has not talked to me about it. He has not said anything. We have not had any written, you know, request to that effect up to now. All right. Mm -hmm. Your Well, thank you very much. Uh, once more, um, I say good evening to our viewers. I, 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 I honestly don't want to take over attention from the opportunity, very rare opportunity I have to talk to the people of South Kaduna uh, on things that are probably even more, more uh, cogent at this time. Mm. But suffice to just say that if he was asking for an official invitation, yes, I have not given him an official written invitation. But last month, mm. I called my brother and said, look, 
I think we need a town hall meeting mm -hmm. to do a post-mortem of the last four, four, five years. And his opinion was that he wasn't going to call any meeting on that issue. Uh, I asked why. Uh, can we afford to stay out of government for the next four years? He said, well, the, it's just a matter of time. The present government will leave. I was worried about that, but I didn't go further. I'm therefore very happy that my request to host me here mm -hmm. is packed this discussion, and hopefully it will lead us to a town hall mm -hmm. where we'll have some more elaborate discussions that will help the region. Mm -hmm. That's one. Very quickly, let me say that I'm not here as a spokesperson for the Kaduna State Government. Um, I am here basically to say a few things mm -hmm. about the misgivings. Uh, that uh, are out there about my commitment to the people of Southern Cameroon. Let me thank the people, however, that from my discussions, there is a general acknowledgement that I've been patriotic for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. But in the last five out of those 25 years, mm -hmm. something appeared to have gone wrong. And I want to quickly say that nothing went wrong. I'm still patriotic. I'm still committed to the development of the people of Southern Kaduna. When my brother was on air yesterday, I, I listened to him. Mm -hmm. He traced the issues of insecurity to uh, just nearby, but I will trace it a lot more backward. Uh, I don't have time for that, but I guess that people like Professor Turaiki, uh, the erudite scholar mm -hmm. on uh, the history of the minorities in northern Nigeria, will say a lot more mm -hmm. on the gradual uh, uh, you know, erosion, so to say, mm -hmm. of the fortunes of the area, right from the pre-colonial to the colonial days and so on and so forth. I would not go into that. Mm -hmm. But what I want to say is that uh, during my tenure, I want to concentrate on that yes. and say some few things very, very quickly right. that hopefully will convince the viewers and the people of Southern Kaduna that indeed I, I was still the Bantex they knew. Mm -hmm. uh, the only difference being that I was the only deputy governor. Mm -hmm. uh, people out, were out there on the street uh, they had their perceptions driven usually largely based on partisan considerations and other uh, considerations. Mm -hmm. And there was the need for me to align, probably in order to be accepted mm -hmm. with those perceptions. Mm -hmm. And I found it difficult to do so because if they would be forgiven, eventually I would not be forgiven because I have the facts as against the perceptions out there. Okay. I was a deputy governor for four years. Mm -hmm. I did not serve as a spare tire. I was... I was very involved. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, myself and the governor and three others appointed the commissioners. Uh, after that, we also were in charge of allocation of projects and programs across the state. Mm -hmm. If you look at the list of commissioners during that time, because I'm talking about the period during which I served. Yes. If you look at the commissioners then, we had commissioners in very key ministries from Southern Kaduna. Agric was manned by Manzo. Health, mm -hmm. another crucial ministry, was manned by Dr. Dogo. Mm -hmm. Education, another very crucial ministry, was manned by, by Professor Nock. Mm -hmm. And Onazi, uh, you know, the lady from Kagoma, mm -hmm. was the head of service. Uh, you know, these are the kind of appointments that I participate in presiding over them, mm -hmm. you know, that we made. Uh, if, you, if you got into projects... Uh, you find that we had no consideration for religion or ethnicity. Uh, what we did was to have consideration for what is known to law and the Constitution, and that is the zonal arrangements, the local governments, and so on and so forth. Okay. And we had that. We had projects spread, projects in education, projects in health, across the entire state. We renovated schools in the southern zone, mm -hmm. like we did in the central and the, the north. Mm -hmm. we, we built primary health care centers across and, but I will tell you that contrary to what happened before I came mm. as deputy governor, uh, we were beginning to do projects in the southern part where he said there were no projects. Take the Bernawa area, for example. We had awarded a contract to dualize the, the road from the railway station through to the, uh, to the uh, 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 prisons, mm. and we were building roads within Bernawa, which was not there before. Before now, okay, your excellency. I, I I think I need to I need to quickly okay to quickly put this make this very clear uh, because it is very important because 
all we all I should be judged for is the way that government was run. But more importantly, which is something that agitates all of us, mm. is the insecurity situation. Yes, that's the reason why I, I wanted to inter. I so can I, can I talk on that? Yes, go can ahead. I talk on that? Now on insecurity, we were sworn in on the 29th of May, which was a Friday. Mm -hmm. While we were being sworn in, killings were going on in Sangha, as they have been going on before then. Like I told you in the last program, in my community, over 100 people were buried in the same grave, mass grave, mm -hmm. in 2014. That was before we came on board. And therefore, what did we do? We got sworn in the, in the, even, in, in the, in the afternoon. In the morning, we had called an emergency security meeting to get a first hand what was happening in Southern Kaduna. That led to the appointment of the Martin Luther Away Committee, okay. which gave us a report. And we sat with Martin Luther Away in the Executive Council and did the white paper, which we implemented. And gradually, we were beginning to see a return to peace based on that. That, Matt, that, his, uh, that, that the general did not probably go into, you know, explaining a little bit more to the community that this is something I did. Mm. Uh, you know, it's something for, 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 for him to, to probably explain. But I believe that if he said, if he did this explanation, probably people will understand. But what was the narrative out there? The narrative was that, in fact, saddened with the responsibility of securing the lives of the people, it was actually we, as a government, that were doing the killings. So you hear people seeking attention. They will say that, look, there is an fire in the aircraft dropping guns. You can see his name on the guns. <laughs> oh, there is an fire that is pushed truckload of guns to Dangoma. They found their way to the... And this, of course, infuriated the youths. And right. people got very angry. Okay, yeah, this, this, this kind of misconceptions yes. were the things I was asked to align with. But I knew differently. I knew the pains we were taking mm -hmm. in ensuring. And I was part of it. Uh, yes, Your I, Excellency, I, I, I know that, um, that you, you are giving us a picture of what happened yes. during your during my tenure. Your, your tenure. You know. Now, uh, the, one of the statements that uh, was made yesterday yes. that, uh, that that brought out this this uh, narrative that you're given has to do one with the issue of uh, uh, citing of, of of projects of government. Okay, that is one. Number two. Up till, uh, in the, I, I don't know as at today, but in the recent a few hours, possibly mm. last week, mm. killings are still going on in southern Kaduna. Mm. Uh, Honorable Asaki, yeah. uh, we, 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 we want to see what is Sokapu doing now, especially now that you're here and His Excellency is here, and he has spoken uh, about some of the things that they did in office. Is it that there was a disconnect between government and the peoples of Southern Kaduna? Or what exactly happened such that till today this, this uh, spate of killings are still going on and what do you think government should do? As I sit here, yes. my heart bleeds. My heart bleeds because what is going on right now and that has been going on across communities in southern Kaduna mm. and the government of the day turning their face the other way as if it's not happening mm. is unfortunate it's unfortunate but let me first of all start from the question you first ask mm. which his Excellency said he did not write a formal request mm. to meet with Sokapu. Mm. But he knows that we talk on phone every time. And we joke mm. on phone also. And if he ever said that he wanted us to meet, I can remember he said I should call a town hall meeting. I jokingly say, well, you are a former deputy governor. You know what it takes to call a town hall meeting. You know Sokapu is there. You have not even acknowledged mm. that we have been elected. Mm. You have not even acknowledged that there is a Sokapu in place. And so if you want a town hall meeting, mm. you can as well make it happen. Mm. And until today, mm. 
And in any case, he knows more than anybody else what it takes to have stakeholders come together to discuss important issues that affect our people. But he has not done that. Then secondly, I am really interested in what he ought to do that he didn't do that up till now. Yes. What he ought to do. Yes. The four years he was deputy governor, he is here. Mm. Is there any time that at his own instance, mm. I told you here yesterday mm. that the, his own predecessors mm. regularly called town hall meetings where there is this feedback conversation. Mm. They will call town hall meetings of various stakeholders and find out what are the struggles of the people, where they think government is not doing well, and what they need. And then he, the, 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 his predecessors will in turn tell the people of Southern Karuna what the challenges of government are. And they will take that to the government, to the governor. And that was the kind of relationship. But I told you here, and he's here, for the four years he was there, there is no such one single okay, meeting. Can I, can, I, can I break in? No, no, no. no, no, no. Wait, you you say that that's wrong. Your, ex your excellency, okay, fine, 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 that fine. he ever called mm -hmm. fine. a meeting, a town hall meeting, and said, this is what government is doing, or what do you expect from government, or what problems are you seeing with government? The only thing we saw is that at every avenue he got, mm -hmm. every avenue he got, he was the spokesman, not the deputy governor, of the governor. And any attempt to raise any issues mm -hmm. concerning the governance style mm -hmm. of his boss, Erufai, he kicks against it. It didn't matter whether it was in the church. It didn't matter whether it was in our own when we invite him, I remember very well when we invited him, so Kapu, mm -hmm. under the leadership of SK Musa, what I'm saying, I'm saying with all sense of responsibility. Mm -hmm. When he was invited in Hamdala, for, uh, so Kapu had formed a committee, a political uh, a committee, so they were giving their report. Mm -hmm. And when he came, he said things that we were told he said in the USA when he went into mm -hmm. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. for Sokapu Convention in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. He went with his then chief of staff, mm -hmm. with some other people who came with the report, we say, no, this cannot be true. Our deputy governor cannot be saying these things. And let me tell you, he said things like this, that there is nothing like Southern Kaduna. Secondly, mm -hmm. that the so-called killings in Southern Kaduna are being exaggerated. It was painful to hear the person we look up to mm. speak like that when the killings are going on. In Hamdela, he did not only challenge the legitimacy of Sokapu, but of the Middle Belt movement. All right, hold, on, hold it there. Yes. I, I, I want to cut in and ask this question because His Excellency is sitting down here and uh, he made a statement. He said on the, on, 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 the, on the day, the very day that they were being sworn in, a hundred people of No, no, his no, 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 no. It, it, about two people in Sangha were killed. In Sangha were killed. I, I was referring to the about over 100 that had been killed earlier. Yes. In Marwa. But mm -hmm. all buried, buried in one mass grave. Yes, exactly. Prior to there. Yeah. And almost immediately the following night, mm. they, they constituted a state uh, the uh, security, security meeting. Emergency security The meeting. question I am asking, mm. Why was a state security meeting convened? Is it not to find solution to the of case? Of course, of course. All right. Of course. Now, how far did you gentlemen yes. go concerning the yeah. issue of the security? When, when, we, when we had that security meeting, we were briefed about what the previous security council had faced. All right. So we said, okay, we want to get to the bottom of this. Who do we get to chair a committee to help us give us a report? And we, that was when we appointed Jeremiah Martin Luther away, who did a beautiful job and turned in a report. 
sorry, sir. Is Sokapu? Is Sokapu having that report? No, no, Sokapu. I, I, you know, he's, he's, I, you see, you see, the fact that I'm here, mm. uh, even as a, a former deputy governor, to talk with my brother, mm. uh, who is leading on a social cultural organization, mm. uh, doesn't mean that probably uh, that is the right thing to do because. Um, uh, but I know that since he speaks for my people, mm. I would listen. Mm. But in all this, you should know the role that everybody has to play. We have the senators, we have the House of Re When I was local government chairman, yes. and we ran into the Sharia crisis, he knows he was in the state of National Assembly. I mobilized all of them, mm. all of them that are Christians in Kaduna State, to, Kaura, mm. to come and sit and deliberate on the way forward. Mm. I was mandated to do a position paper to Governor McCarthy, Mm -hmm. And I did that position paper, which we all signed from Group Captain Aziz mm -hmm. to the last councillor. Yes. I came to Equa headquarters and gave a lecture mm -hmm. to the GCC, out of which they passed a vote of confidence, moved to Kaduna, met with the DCC, and met with the governor. Mm -hmm. That is how I have always acted proactively. At that time, yes. I was wise enough to tell the deputy governor that he should stay out of this, because he's on the same ticket with the governor. Mm -hmm. It is a policy of government that we are reacting to. Mm -hmm. So we as elected representatives, we are going to speak for our people. Surprisingly, today that now, then that I became deputy governor, yes. my people were asking that this, day, this was my understanding, that I could sit and chair a security council meeting like I did in a few cases, mm -hmm. in a number of cases in the absence of the governor, mm -hmm. that I could chair the executive council and then go back outside and probably hold a press conference against the government. I wasn't going to do that. Where is your senator? Where are your house of, uh, where are your representatives? Why wouldn't they mobilize to put a position to government? Mm -hmm. But even without that, I was doing what I, he said. I had not called. So, I don't know whether that's what his predecessor told him. Yeah, I'm sure Solomon would not lie. I called Solomon to to the state to the state house. Mm -hmm. He came in with a member of the state of the national esco, mm -hmm. and I also went there with. Uh, uh, with one of my my deputy chief of staff then, mm. uh, and we had a two-hour meeting. The outcome of that meeting was that I sponsored him to invite a minimum of 150 people from the constituency of Southern Kaduna, mm. and then so that we can sit down and have a briefing. And that we briefing took place in Kaura. Okay. Unfortunately, you know, I have seen a lot of people play into the gallery. Mm. You know, I'm not into popularity contest with anyone. We went into the meeting, what we had agreed, mm. that we should draw the youths mm -hmm. and tell them not to take the laws into their hands. It, we all agreed. But when we got there, the president stood up as a lawyer and said, it is their legitimate right to defend themselves. Mm. And I was shocked because I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think it is possible for you to urge youths and encourage them to pick somebody on the street who is assumed. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that, we get a reprisal that comes and delete our villages. I didn't think that was right. Mm -hmm. And these are the areas where I come into conflict with people. Mm -hmm. We must do what is right to save our people. We cannot dance on their graves in search for popularity and, you know, whatever, playing to the gallery, looking for popularity. I wouldn't do that. I'll mm -hmm. cry over every death. Mm -hmm. Now, so what I'm saying is this. First of all, there is a lot of falsehood that is going around. Yesterday, he mentioned, he's doing a little bit of a detour now, that probably it was a mention somewhere, but I think there, was this, there has been this categorical statement mm. that I had a, an interview with Channel in which I said that Southern Kaduna was the problem. This is my interviews with Channels. You may watch to watch it, and b beyond it, I also have interviews with Channels when I was in government, when I was outside government, mm. when I was in opposition, and when I was in the ruling party, I have CDs here. One good thing they will tell you is my level of consistency. The way I have defined the Fulani crisis in 2008 is the way I defined them when I was deputy governor. Mm. I don't act based on any pecuniary interest. I was invited first to be deputy governor in 1999. Aziz is there, it was in his house. He will bear me witness, and I turned it down. At this age, I will not seek to be deputy governor and protect that position to the extent that my people would be killed 
and I will cover it up. I will not do that. God will not forgive me. Is it possible? So, so, so what I'm saying is that please, we, you have begged mm. and we have prayed over it. Yes. Let us be honest. Mm. When people say things, I told you about the, the most dangerous fake news that one of us wrote in Vanguard, which was one of the things that caused a lot of the problems. Mm. He wrote to say that the government in which I served kept money for Fulanis who would kill and they would be paid. That's the way the Southern Kaduna people perceived it. And that is that the government that is taking an oath to secure them is actually the government doing the killings. All right. So, so what I'm saying <laughs> is that there were in many instances yes. falsehoods, outright well, falsehoods. Think, so, so, and so. I thought... Yes. I, I, think I thought, just a minute, and I thought that aligning with that, if they get before God and say, oh, sorry, God, uh, we didn't know the truth, you, you know, please, we, we are sorry, they might be forgiven. If I that sat on the council meeting, presided over it, mm -hmm. if I said, what will I say? Will I now say, sorry, I didn't know what was happening? Right. When indeed, it was me. Okay, Your Excellency, mm -hmm. uh, uh, President. You see, I think when I start talking, you have to allow me yes. to speak also. Go ahead. Um, why we're here, mm. like I said, it's not about the politics. No. It's not about the positions that are being given. Because we know that this administration, and contrary to what he said, in the last four years, of the first tenure of the administration he served, mm. he knows that Southern Kaduna has never been so shortchanged like that administration. And I can tell him because I have been there from 1999 mm -hmm. until today, a key player. So we know these things. But that is not the issue. The issue is that as we're talking now, mm -hmm. over a Ten communities in Chukun local government are in the rain. They have been displaced. Mm -hmm. They have been attacked by invaders who will attack, kill, rape the women, and displace them. And in some instances, take over. I have those communities here as the president of Sokapu. Mm -hmm. I have been involved in the last two months thereabout taking relief materials to those communities. He does not know those communities. In Kaju local government, as I'm talking, over 15 communities have also been attacked. Last three weeks, mm -hmm. we went to a place called Ngwamagaji mm -hmm. in Kaju local government. It was attacked similarly, and it's just at the border with Plateau. Mm -hmm. So we have these communities. In current local government, his own local government, mm. Zangan district in Ataka Chibdom, mm. nine communities have been displaced. They cannot go back to those communities. He knows. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking of a serious humanitarian problem. That is what bleeds, that is what makes my heart to bleed. And that is why we in Sokapu mm -hmm. are concerned. Yes, he said. On the day they were being sworn in, people were being killed. I told you here yesterday that these killings have been going on even before the coming of the administration that he served as deputy governor. Yes. I did not deny that. I told you here that sometimes in 2014, I think around October, in Bondong, a place in his own constituency, in his own local government, over 140 people were killed in one night before they are coming. So killings have been going on. But what makes this one different that we're so worried about is that this administration, which is served with Governor Erufai, does not show sympathy to the killings, the ethnic cleansing that is going on across our communities. All right. There is no time. Let, let, me, let, me, let me learn. There is no time... Mm -hmm that you ever see all these communities that have been attacked, mm. have been displaced, you will never see his principal or himself. He, of course, he's 
whether it is today or yesterday, he has risen to be one of the most illustrious sons of Saudan Kaduna. And that empathy needs to be, to be shown. Mm. Let me give you an example. The reason why I wanted to uh, interject, uh, sir, yes. hold your line of thought because I have to go on break. When we return, you will continue with, okay. with your line of thought. Viewers, don't go away. We'll be back very shortly. It's time for break. Hello, you're on to National Talk. Share your views on National Talk, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thursdays and Fridays. Calls only. Keep a date with the Lifeline on Equa Television Africa every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday by 4 p.m. With repeats, Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 p.m., Saturday 8.30 and Sunday 9 p.m. Keep watching the Lifeline on Equa TV Africa. If you're just tuning in, it's National Talk on ECWA TV Africa. I'm still Donald Weze. I have His Excellency, uh, Architect uh, Yusuf Barnabas Bala, still in the studios, and uh, Honorable Jonathan Asaki, the President of uh, Sokapu. We will continue with your line of thought before we went on break. And I want you to link it up with, I, I know that if I allow the two gentlemen to keep talking, we will not arrive at a place where I want us to be. And what I want us to do is to find what is the way forward. Now continue with your line of thought. Now, now what I'm trying to say is that truly I am here because I've been everywhere crying about the plight of my own people, the people of Southern Kaduna. Here we have a government that has been against the people, no development. If I ask now what has, is that project that has been done, comparing what has been collected over the four years, and now five years, mm -hmm. applied to Southern Kaduna, mm -hmm. I don't think I will have that answer. But that is not the issue. The issue is this that people are being killed, are being displaced, and their communities, their, their lands are being taken over, mm -hmm. and nothing is done. Now, he is the one that should be one of the people raising his voices to call for help. Ethnic cleansing is going on in Kaduna State. There is no doubt about that one. But we have him every time defending government. There is nowhere he has ever registered sympathy to what is going on. And let okay. me let me say this. Okay. Let me say he mentioned something. He mentioned something about about pain that a writer is the PRO of Sokapu now that he's talking about yes. who was writing for Vanguard. Mm -hmm. That the writer wrote and said if Fulanis will keep people, then there is government will pay them money. If we fear God, nobody will say such a thing. The governor himself mm. it is there on you can Google it. He granted interview with Maope of channels, and he agreed that he's been paying, that he was paying, he followed these people to their countries, and he paid them so that they will stop killing. Mm. 
in Southern Kaduna. And he went ahead to say that because they were, it was, they were on a vengeance mission, mm -hmm. that they were killed during the 2011 post-presidential cri uh, 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 crisis. Mm -hmm. And that is why that they have been coming to kill, and he followed them, he identified them. But he brought a very false narrative. This is where I want us to really focus on. That the president was faced, I mean, was, was, was faced, uh, uh, made by his predecessor, Yekoa, who is from Southern Kaduna, the late Governor Yekoa, that he started paying these people. That is not true. That is falsehood because. Uh, uh, let me 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 this point this point is very important. This point is very important. Honorable, yes. wait, 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 wait. We we are not here. We are not in a debate here. That's one. Two. We are here to it's find a, a debate, direction. But he mentioned it severally, and it has yes, been. But a, it has been, it has been an issue. Your statement is that what he said is not true. That's your statement. And uh, he is he is sitting down here. Supposing he also had, I need I need us to, to, to relax let our let minds let so let that we can. Let me say something. Let me say something. The Agwe committee he keeps referring to. Mm -hmm. The Agwe committee he keeps referring to. Even that Agwe committee, let me tell you, after the uh, presidential, uh, post presidential uh, crisis of 2011, mm -hmm. the federal government constituted a, com a commission of inquiry mm -hmm. headed by the late Sheikh Lemu. Mm -hmm. And they did their report and came up with their findings. Okay. And they made strong recommendations so, that people, li listen, sir. I, 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 I need I need us to, to, to be balanced in our argument. He was the deputy governor. Yes. He has information. It is possible the information he has you don't have, though you are also a prominent son of, of Southern Kaduna people. What I am trying to do is to find out, okay, there was a report and I also go I, yes. I also work directly with my communities, yes. Southern Kaduna communities, there are information yes. of the dehumanization they are going through with this administration that he doesn't yes. know. So yes. the empathy that he is he's supposed to express to these people mm -hmm. is not there. All right. Do do I now do, do, do I now suppose your excellency? Yeah, uh, do I now suppose that the problem on ground hmm. is that you have not shown empathy to your people? No, no, no. Before I get there. Let, let us remove one assumption. My brother Asaike keeps emphasizing indirectly that he is more patriotic than I am to the cause of Southern Kaduna, to the pains. That is not true. The fact that you are in government, mm -hmm. all right, even when I was not in government, what we do is to identify a problem and provide solutions. We don't go around making, seeking popular. You know, oh, I have been here, I did this, I showed empathy. No, we, we provide solutions. In my last interview here, mm -hmm. I clearly defined the problem. Nobody has defined it. The, def the, the best I had was, oh, because we are Christians, we are this, we are that. And I said, no. My definition, and I told you how misdefinition mis mm -hmm. can lead to a disaster where you can never get a solution. And I told you the solution I provided, mm. all right? Now, it is easy for you to keep telling me that I lied, that it is not true. It's very easy. For example, in your own case, you said I had an interview with you, and I have dropped this, which will tell you that it is not true. You said we never made appointments that balanced. I have given you with names. You have not said any names. No, I'm not going to I, 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 no, excuse me, just a minute. I told you that we distributed projects fairly and i named it for example during my time the costliest road we were constructing outside kaduna city mm -hmm. in any place in kaduna state was in zangokata the urban uh Kavachan project that road is it, still there it has not wait, been built. it was started by the uh, first by the previous government okay and the building is talking about let me finish there let me finish let me finish i have a call coming no, just a minute let me let me i have a call coming in please Hello, good evening. Good evening, my brother. Uh, uh, this is National Talk on Equa Television. Who is on the line? Yes, uh, I'm Kure by name. I'm calling from Kaduna. Okay, uh, what's your contribution? Uh, good evening, my two brothers there. The Honorable Azaki, His Excellency, the Deputy Governor. Go ahead. Remember, you have one minute. 
Okay. Uh, honestly, my Bible tells me that I should not put my trust on man. Mm-hmm. Rather, you fail me. That's what uh, His uh, Excellency has said to me. Mm. He would have loved to stay in the uh, chairman, so to be. But uh, as he went to be deputy governor, he has failed me. Mostly, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Okay. So. Hello? Hello? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So what, what, what I'm saying here is this. When we talk, we talk with facts. Uh, I've heard the last caller. He's, he's, he's entitled to his opinion. Mm. Posterior to judge, ultimately. All right? I have been vilified. All right? And I'm here to say that I, I see no reason. And I, and I want somebody to tell me which of the policies of government was anti southern community, which I supported? Which policy? We, we, I have talked about security. I've talked about uh, reforms in education. Mm-hmm. I might not have talked about our uh, reform in the public service. I might not have talked about the, the things that placed us right. internationally. Sorry, another call is coming. Hello? Hello? Yeah, good evening. Yeah, good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. Who's on the line? This is National Talk. Yeah, this is uh, Reverend Joshua calling from Kaduna. Reverend Joshua from Kaduna. All right, go ahead and uh, share your thoughts with us. Hello? Yep. Go ahead and talk to me. Yes, okay, I, I, I like the talk that is going on now. And then I, I want to, if our our Mugeto here will actually... Tell us, uh, uh, of course, the, the, the people, the honorable and excellency, if they can easily tell us uh, the, the present solution to this killing that is going on in southern Kaduna. Okay. It is just so devastating. So I think you are taking back the past record and all of that, but what is the present situation? What is being on the ground now in order to save the situation? Because people are being killed. They in they out. People are being displaced. They are far being destroyed. What is the remedy? I don't right. think that will help us. Well, thank you very much for your call. Hello. 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 Good evening. This is National Talk on Airport Television. Who is on the line? Yeah, my name is Adam. Adam from where? Adams, Ija from Jones. Okay, go ahead and share your thoughts with us. Okay, um, the um, former deputy governor talked about um, development, and then he mentioned Bernawa. Can, can he can he categorically mention those local areas if evenly distributed those projects to? Because for me, Bernawa is in the city. What has he done concerning people in rural areas? That is one. Secondly, about the issue of the killings that we have every day going on, mm-hmm. what is his take? What has he ever come out on national television to condemn this killing? Thank you very much. You're welcome. So we'll take this, this too. Uh, it's open. What's the way forward? And uh, the issue of projects and distribution and whatever. But my main concern is what is the way forward? Well, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've said it severally, publicly. The way forward, one, not only in Southern Kaduna, mm-hmm. many communities in the Middle Belt have been displaced. Okay. Truly, and they have been displaced out of their homelands. Mm-hmm. And the government of the day, mm-hmm. if they are really serious about solving this problem, should eject those people that have occupied these lands and return the original owners to their homes and rehabilitate them. That's number one. Number two, mm-hmm. most of these communities that have been attacked, they have been attacked in a gorilla style. Mm-hmm. In the night, when they are not expecting, they will just go and they soft targets, children and women who cannot run. Mm-hmm. And so, empowering these communities, like it happened in Burkina Faso, Mm-hmm. where the, the jihadists that attack these communities on a daily basis, the government empowered these communities, you know, to bear small arms, like a vigilante kind of thing, mm-hmm. so that when these 
invaders come, they can withstand them before the security will come in. And then forming a joint civilian task force too, you know, so that they can be part of the, 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 the civilian uh, population there, the youth, will be part of the, 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 the national security so that they will monitor what is going on. Because there are instances that some bad eggs within the security forces have also colluded mm -hmm. to perpetrate these crimes. Therefore, if the government takes these steps, joint civilian task force, empowering the communities to form vigilante groups, and then returning these communities that have been displaced and rehabilitating them, mm -hmm. that will go a long way in solving this problem. Your Excellency, sir. Well, we, 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 we did just exactly what he's saying. We formed the vigilante uh, service in Kaduna State, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, where it is now, I do not have the details because I, I have left. But the was, vigilante service you left, listen, they, are, they are now only attending ceremonies. Oh, and, uh, yes. Well, you are, so you don't are, go to the villages. That's where the attacks are still going well, on. Well, you are just telling me. But let me say something. Mm -hmm. I, we spoke about this in the last time mm -hmm. I was here. Yes. And I offered not just our solution in Kaduna State, but the national solution, because this is a national malaise. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you ca initially, initially when this thing started, mm -hmm. I dare not open up the discussion and look at the bigger picture. To some people, it will be interpreted as not being sensitive to Southern Kaduna. Mm -hmm. But if something is happening and you don't leave it in the bud, mm -hmm. it will continue to affect you. True. I have talked, for example, about the Nebulos, the the uh, ECOWAS Treaty of Free Movement. I spoke about this in 2008, and uh, uh, nobody listened. Thank God uh, the governor of Kano State only spoke about it only recently. But I said it since, that you cannot allow a treaty, you cannot have a treaty that allows people mm -hmm. to move unchecked. That's not what is happening in Gabon. They do all the screening before you come in. They take the number of cows, they take their health statistics, they, they know what you are taking into their country, and so we're not doing that in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this has been on. And I mentioned this, I have said this long before now. So in, in the past, mm -hmm. when some of us, when, when the killings were going on, I looked ahead, mm -hmm. all right, and said, look, you, if, if you don't stop a stream from the source, you cannot stop it midstream. The water will continue to flow. That is the nature of the insecurity we have. Mm -hmm. But bringing me back, bringing us back, because I know we don't have time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave this point, this, this venue, without making this, this. I don't want us to confuse whatever is happening, either before me or mm -hmm. after me. Mm -hmm. All right? And I, by that, I'm not saying that what is happening after me uh, I'm not giving, casting any aspirations. I, I am only saying I don't have the details. But the fact of the matter mm -hmm. is that I am just as concerned, if not more concerned, that those people that refer to me as not being... And let me tell you, by the way, I don't want to say this, but we have to talk. The, when people talk about me, unfortunately, we are not on the same course. We are, when we talk about Southern Kaduna, we are not really talking about Southern Kaduna in the real sense. We have envy... We have mutual hatred. Somebody will tell you he has, you are not the same tribe. Somebody will tell you you are not the same denomination. And that, for him, is enough problem to create problems. But otherwise, I have come here. I have, because I knew I was going to be asked this question. If he's not ready with the facts, please give him an opportunity to come back here, even if I'm not here, to say the things he's saying with facts. He says government is not concerned. He should show the facts. I have given facts. I have said what we did to secure Southern Kaduna. And have you noticed that he, I, he is the one scoring himself here? You see, the, 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 the thing about facts or no facts. Oh, you, know, you are not interested in facts? Everybody has facts. Everybody Where are they? Where are the facts? <laughs> okay. you said, you, just a minute. You just, just a minute. Just a minute. You, you, just just said, a minute. you just said here that, just that a Bernawa Road, mm -hmm. that one of the projects you have done is Bernawa Road, you dualize. Mm -hmm. I stay in Bernawa. Really? And that road, for the past five years, mm -hmm. in fact, the escalation excavated the gutters and left it like that, and then people are dumping uh, this thing, uh, refuse there, and it causes flood every time. It has not been done. Yeah, like, uh, so I, maybe, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. Has so, 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 so there are inner and, roads. And the Ayanda Road that you say the, the, the biggest contract given is Hadan Karuna. Mm -hmm. That, again, is my community. 
And that road was not started by this administration, but that is the way it is. Gravels have been poured on that road, and it is there. So maybe when you left, you don't know what has happened behind you, but it is there the way it was. But what concerns me, I'm not concerned about projects. That's People right. must be having security. That is my concern. That is my passion. You must be secure to have to think of any project. And the, the, the insecurity, our communities are gradually being displaced to camps to cluster around the suburbs of Kaduna. Mm -hmm. And that is what is disturbing me now. And nobody, all these communities I say they have been displaced, nobody is attending to them in terms of Medicare. Mm -hmm. Nobody is taking food to them. It's only good spiritual individuals and faith-based organizations that are going with, 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 with food items and clothing. Mm -hmm. Even for Kapu, we, we launch an appeal and people have been bringing clothing materials and food and medication and we take it to them. This is what it means. It's humanity. We cannot be talking about ourselves and self gratification when our people are being dehumanized. Some states have governors that actually are looking into this crisis in their state. But I'm saying, in our own state, we have a governor who has shown some kind of inordinate hatred for the people of Southern Kaduna that because they did not vote for him. That is the reason. And he being his deputy throughout the four years, throughout the four years, mm -hmm. was behind that philosophy. Can I ask you a question here? Can I, the question I want to ask you is, uh, the, 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 the Nigerian political terrain, I, 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 I didn't want to bring politics into it. But uh, since the issue is now going down to the, the issue of projects, allocation, appointments, I want to ask a question. A sitting governor who is in another political party, and you yesterday sat here and said that Southern Kaduna is predominantly PDP. Yes. All right. Yes. Now, if a sitting governor who is in another political party decides not to work with people who are in another political party because they did not support him, what would you say? It is not to work with them, but to provide basic facilities for yes. them. Yes. It is all constitutional. The constitution so designed that the resources of the state are given in trust to whoever that occupies that office of responsibility. Honor, and honorable. it is the duty and responsibility of whoever it is, whether he's a governor or a president, mm -hmm. whether they voted for you or not, mm -hmm. whether they are your party or not, whether they belong to your religious group or your tribal group or not, it is your duty and it is the constitutional requirement mm -hmm. that you give them what belongs to them because the resources are for all. But this selective treatment, mm -hmm. even in terms of security, when something happens, when our communities are invaded, mm -hmm. no sympathy shown. The governor has not for once visited our communities, like I'm talking about, since I became Sokapo president, to go and see. And I'm telling you, over 30 communities mm -hmm. have now been displaced. Yes. The reason why I ask you this question is because in the Nigerian nation, you and me know that uh, people like to work with those that voted for them. Uh, uh, look, but look, at the, look at the danger of what has happened over the yes. last four years, which is the point probably you are trying to make. Mm. It, is, it, is, it is right for parties to have their own position. But what is wrong, which Sokapo has done, is that this is the Sokapo constitution. If you look at the objectives of the Sokapu position, uh, Constitution, it says clearly under Section 8, 1, that it shall enhance the bond of unity among the communities and people of Southern Kaduna, irrespective of political, tribal, religious, or cultural affiliation. Okay. That, that they didn't do. They came out very clearly. Some of us restrain ourselves from setting a, an APC Sokapu, mm -hmm. all right? Because clearly, Sokapu came out and said it was a PDP thing. Southern Kaduna was PDP. And therefore, what have they given us, including us that are in APC, now, now, is that, just a minute, can, can, what, just can a minute, now, can what, now just a minute, you, get to Let me say, you spoke. Now, what has it cost us? What it has cost us is that 
It looks as if it is not even the PDP that is the opposition to the state government today. It is Southern Kaduna. Because the leadership of the zone, not even the political party, came out collectively and denounced and went against that political party. If I mention statements that we have made here, I'm sure people will get even probably more angry. But, this, but they are facts. They are facts. Okay? So what we are saying is this. I will, I will be, because before I'm cut down, I mean, before time runs out, I will advise Sokapu. That is the duration of the Just a minute. Before the advice, minute, before the advice. Let, me, still let, me make, let me make an observation. Before be, the advice. You I don't want to run out you, of time. You have, you have, no, you don't worry. You have had ample opportunity. To, he has had ample opportunity to, when he was deputy governor for four years to call Sokapu and give this advice and give a sense of direction and a sense of leadership. But he, 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 he ran away from that. He was a deputy governor. Wait, I, as I, a deputy I, governor. I, want us, I, don't, I don't want us to, you see, we are today. It is not here. about the senator. It's not about the member of the House of Representatives. Oh, it is giving leadership oh, yes, to the political party. That's why you said even honorable, if you go, honorable, honorable, you don't honorable, care honorable, so long as he's PDP. Now you, you were elected. <laughs> I want you, I want you, I, 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 I want you to understand you said, where I yes, am going. What you said. This, I want you to understand where I am going. <laughs> I want, you are the president of Soka. Yes. What is the way forward? We, all these years, things have gone wrong. Mm. Things have gone wrong. What I am picking from the two of you is that you are, you all love your people. Mm. You want progress for, no, your for him. I don't you want my direction. He only and uh, you are in the best position mm. tonight mm. here. Mm to show the world that you are together and you're moving in a particular direction. What I am seeing is a debate. Mm. That's the truth. Things have happened in the past, yes. Things are still happening today, yes. And they will happen tomorrow. But you are leaders and God put you in these two positions. You as a former deputy governor and a leader and a stakeholder of Southern Kaduna peoples and you as the president of Sokapu. Mm. Now, this is me, the opportunity the to see that. This say, is the way forward. Say, That's what I'm let, let me say one thing that is the way forward. Anybody, when you rise into any position, particularly a political position, like the one he occupies. It's all about me. Yes. <laughs> it's not thing. all about you. <laughs> Whether you are a commissioner or you are a member of the House or whatever, mm -hmm. it, it is a duty, a very righteous duty, mm -hmm. for you to look at you are people where you are coming from and know that you will still go back to them and then look at the government you are serving and be able to tell them the truth that is what i what i, I said here yesterday our sons the sokapu sons and daughters that found themselves in this government erected a very strong wall between the people mm -hmm. and the government and the government the governor himself i will not just blame him for everything because what he hears from people that serve close to him, people that have been given positions of responsibility like him, don't look at him and tell him that this is where our people are struggling. You must be, you must be a member of the Executive Council of Kaduna State. What is to, to, to know what we say no, no, and what because we Because if, if, if you say so, mm. you said everything that has been done mm. was done with him. Now mm. let me tell you, in Kaduna local government, after the, 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 the kidnap and murder of the paramount ruler there, mm -hmm. an emirate was created. And up till now, mm -hmm. the chief, a chief for these people has not been uh, reappointed. And up till now, mm -hmm. the killings, more of the killings are going on there. Nobody mm -hmm. to help direct the affairs of that place. Now, if he was there, in that decision, mm. what did he do? What I did? And then the names of our chiefdoms have been changed. Chiefdoms bear the names of the ethnic nationalities they come from, mm -hmm. like the Agom Ogrok, which is Serki Kagoro, mm -hmm. and uh, Agom Baju, which is Serki Baju, or the chief of Baju, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But his own administration, his own administration, okay. Change these names. 
his administration or the administration of Governor El Rufai. Of Governor El Rufai, because we, we he need said to put it in perspective. Well, well, his administration, because he said everything has been done with him. So I'm trying to point out some things that actually our people are worried about today. And he has not seen anything wrong with that. Mm. That that names of these kingdoms, he did not, El Rufai did not create these kingdoms, but that names of these kingdoms have been changed that they should never bear the names of their ethnic nationality, but bear the names of towns. All right. Uh, Honorable, I, 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 I will want to ask a question, yes. but the question is going to be directed at uh, His Excellency. Meanwhile, I want to tell our viewer out there that uh, the general manager of uh, Equa Television, Engineer Cho uh, Tony J. Nakale, has graciously allowed me to run this program for the next 30 minutes. So we still have enough time to discuss more and get to the very root of this. Your Excellency, sir. Mm. The change of names mm. of chiefdoms or, or, or rulers mm. of local communities, Agwambaju mm. is no longer is, is no longer yes, Sarkin Zonkwa. Sarkin Zonkwa and the rest of, and the rest of them. Mm. What happened? What happened was, in fact, in fact, I was largely responsible for that. Not even the governor. Right. The reason being that. The reason being that part of the problem I discovered. Apart from the over-factionalization of our, of our area, which creates tiny divisions that make it easy for us to be overrun. Mm. Because a more perfect situation for me would have been to even have one ship down. Because then our unity would be difficult to break. Mm. But for me, it, we already have been broken into small pieces. Everybody talking about tribe and so on. Contrary to what we see in Zadzo, mm. for example, where you have the Emir of Zadzo. Mm. All right, deliberately refusing to say the Amy of Hausa uh, or the Hausa uh, or Fulani or whatever. Mm. The reason is this: as part of the, 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 this crisis, I I put on my thinking cap. Each time we had a meeting, people would say, "Oh, the Fulanis we live with, we've always been in peace. They give us their food. No, no, we give them our land to stay. The fertilizer we use." And, and, but nobody went beyond that to say, then what went wrong? And one of my findings, I may be wrong, but we always need to keep thinking. Mm -hmm. That is what leadership is all about. Is that unlike those days, mm -hmm. and a few chiefs that we have, mm -hmm. traditional rulers saw themselves as fathers over the territory they are governing. Mm -hmm. And so whoever, beyond even their immediate tribe, Whoever is within their territory, mm. they provide leadership, which increases their respect, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Which, on the other hand, if you don't, you create mercenaries within the chiefdom. People can come as Fulanese, and when they come and you have Fulanese within the chiefdom, who are not covered, all right? Mm -hmm. We do that in Marwa, for example. Of course, we've been criticized for that, that, oh, we must be, we must be aligned to Fulani, to Islam, and so on. But I guess the wisdom was that it is difficult to penetrate. And that is why, except for crises that have spilled into Marwa and causing death, nothing has happened. Because this kind of leadership over everybody that stays mm -hmm. gives command and control mm -hmm. over those people. So I thought that instead... And, and I, I was supported. Mm. I thought that if the, the titles was related to the territory, it would give them a bigger respect. All right? Okay. That is not to say that they've, you've obliterated the tribe. No. No. It's a strategy. It's a winning strategy for the chiefdom. All right? Mm -hmm. But what then happened was that, of course, a committee was set. It came out with a proposal of names. I personally, uh, it's not, I don't agree with every single thing. Mm -hmm. I felt that, for example, the Atiab community said, because we now sent that to the chiefdoms, I said, if you want to make corrections, you can make corrections, but don't name it after tribe. Name it after territory. For example, the Qatar came and said, Obama be the Atiab. Mm -hmm. And for those people who are in the council who are not, who don't understand the language. They try to resist. I said, no. Abinati is territory. You have to allow this pass. All right? It's territory. Mm -hmm. 
Because we are saying, let it, uh, it doesn't have to be sunken. But it was, not allowed, no, listen. To, it was not allowed to pass. No, listen to me. They changed it to no, no, Tanje, which is a town. L it's listen, a small town. Listen, that listen. does not capture the attention. No, you see, you, you see, you see <laughs> that, that brings me to why I think I have to advise you. All right, before you give him the, the advice, Your Excellency. Yes. There is a call coming in. Hello? Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Who is on the line? Yeah. This is Big Talk. This is National Talk. Talk to yes, me. This is Big Talk. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I want to make a comment as regards this discussion, sir. Go ahead. The first thing I want to say is I'm really a little bit disappointed at what Mr. Bantek is saying. Okay, go because ahead. Because he's more out to defend himself, to make clear his name, rather than stating the fact. These kings, this leadership, they come from a history. These are diverse ethnic groups in Southern Kaduna who have a history and some sense of autonomy by their tribes. Mm -hmm. While limiting them to particular, our history is being changed. Day in day as you go online, you hear a lot of statements like Zongo Katap was won the place 400 years ago by the Fulanese. These are blatant lies. Our histories have been tampered with. And this man could come in the quest to clear his name and put the people's lives at risk. This is rather untenable and unfortunate that we could have a son like that and who, who does a thing like that. Secondly, these people, I, in fact, I, I'm thankful that this thing is brought back again because the first interview, I was not satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. the, the reason is that, one, these people, the governor said they are on a revenge mission. I'm just 39 years old. Now. But they should tell me when the full and were attacked. Which particular tribe? Who attacked them? And what mission are they? They have taken the videos they have been put in line. They didn't have any basis. It's later that they came up with some excuses. And when he comes out to say, even the 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 term, the, 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 term, the terminology uh, had uh, had to be farmers clashes. It's wrong. There was nothing like that. These people are maimed. Let's talk about the Adra Kingdom, for example. These people are maimed day in, day out. There was nothing agriculture. They don't farm in their rooms. But their houses are burnt, their churches are burnt, and yet it's disgraceful. I, I want to humbly say, with all due respect, well, Mr. Banker should be concerned about the people who should come out, he should pay what is the right thing, and his name will be clear. But this is more of like what Hassan will call Koskarima. Kind of okay, uh, Mr. Victor, thank you so much for your contribution. Well, viewer, we are going to pause for a moment and take a break. When we return, we'll continue with this discussion. Don't go away. It's National Talk. In the segment of the morning show where we bring you reviews on some communities um, and considering the fact mm -hmm. that animals to do one thing or the other. Yeah. 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 So, so far, so... Who knows? Who should have speak well of us as a nation? Traditional medicine for COVID-19. The president has worried. Because I can't, I can't take the protection of the rights of Nigerians. Really. National Talk. Share your views on National Talk, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thursdays and Fridays. Calls only. Well, you're welcome back uh, from the break. And uh, if you're just tuning in, you're catching us uh, on the lee side of uh, uh, national talk. I still have the national president of Sokapu, Honorable Jonathan Asaki, in the house, and His Excellency, uh, architect uh, Yusuf uh, 
Barnabas Bala, the immediate past deputy governor of Kaduna State. We are discussing issues that have happened and we are trying to chart the way forward so that we can work as a team. Your Excellency, mm. your line of thought before we went on break. You, you were talking about you wanted to advise yeah. the president. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Let me put it this way. For me, it is easy for people to feel one is not concerned because he's trying to offer the innermost thinking of government. Mm. So if I came here and said, well, government is wrong, government is doing the killings, government is doing this, the people have no problem, I, people would clap for me. I, I find it difficult to do that. I would give even another more difficult suggestion. Uh, I'm doing this with a sense of responsibility at the expense of whatever, including my life. I believe that we need to relook our narrative and our strategy. Look at the American uh, uh, Black Lives Matters. Mm -hmm. If you see the struggle out there, you see that it's not all about blacks alone. You will see the number of whites that are involved. How did that happen? Because the plight of the blacks has been presented in such a way that it resonated across. We must find a way of doing that. Whatever problem you have, there are people who have similar problems across board. You must learn to extend. What I have seen is a situation where we seem to say to ourselves that, look, we here are completely right. We are not wrong. Here is completely wrong. I've, I failed, I, I would not agree. There are people who mean well within us. A few may not even mean well. There are others, they may not be too many, but they mean well on the other side. The strategy is to reach out and then have your best foot step forward and let the other people step forward. And then you sit down and look at the bigger picture. But this narrative of we versus them is going, is going to be very, very difficult. It's going to be very difficult. It's going to take us too long. I have seen situations, very terribly difficult situations, but which have been approached in such a subtle manner, mm -hmm. using people from across board to generate a movement that will solve the problem. Okay. I, I tried, I'm, 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 I'm saying this, based on something I've always told anybody that bothered to listen. From my experience 25 years ago in the National Constitutional Conference, we were asked to look for a state, and there was nothing I did not do to get some of my leaders to accept that we should get across board mm -hmm. and talk to the people of the North. In fact, even beyond the indigenous of Kaduna State, even the generals and the retired civil servants that have come to stay in Kaduna and get their buy-in, we said, no, 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 no. It is about us. It's not about them. For them, they don't like us. We will put our memo together. We will submit it. The Constitution allows that we can submit our memo without consulting anybody. And this lack of synergy, mm -hmm. this synergy I was asking for was exactly what Plato did. Plato came with people from both sides of the divide, Christians, Muslims, because the important thing was to get a state. But Christians, Muslims, this, that, this tribe and this tribe, Mm. And they came together and did a single memo. By the time they came to the National Constitutional Conference, I knew they were going to get their state because they were seen together, the royal fathers from both sides, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, everybody. And by the time they penetrated the, the organs of the conference, the Southeast Caucus, the Northwest Caucus, mm -hmm. and all that, they left with the Sarah state. Even though Gurara was by far more qualified. All right. All right I'm, just, I'm coming. I'm coming. So... I am begging that, yes, we are angry. We are angry. The people that have talked to me about my apparent non-concern, let me, let me assure them that I may not shout too much about the level of my commitment, but I still want to reassure them that I'm committed. But my strategy differs. I have worked on it. I have seen it work. By the time I split the Kaura Kauru constituency, I knew the people I met. They are not in contention now because the important thing is that I have two federal constituencies. So what I'm saying is that 
our style, our style yeah. must change. Okay, because style must change because right whichever right. leader, whichever leader, this adversarial approach to leadership, which in the case of our own people in Southern Karuna, does not even does not even limit itself to Erufai. Even Yakwa was attacked. So this adversarial approach to people in government, the commissioners that I said we had, we had Professor Nock as Commissioner of Education. But when the, the fake news people came with the idea that one of the things the governor has again done is to move Kavanchan College of Education to Gidanwaya, there was nothing Professor Nock did not do, trying to get people to understand that it is not true. And they insisted. Right, so well, so nice. what I'm begging is yes. that, yes, we are all angry, yes. but my people have a saying that I cannot repeat here. It's about bows and arrows that if you are too angry, you, you can't really, I don't know how it is usually coined. Mm -hmm. So let's not be too angry. Let's not, we, we are intended to be, to be angry, but let's not do it in such a way that we miss the point. We miss our target. Mm -hmm. Let us resonate. Let's allow our thinking to resonate with the entire state. Across the state, mm -hmm. we have people that are hurt. That okay. is hurting. Okay, let me allow the national pro government is hurting. Yes. And let me tell you, you talked about how people lose out when they are. It's not only South. Look, Kuba local government, when we came into government, we discovered that because that local government had been in opposition for 16 years, the PDP did not put a single project in Kuba. One, even a gutter. Because we are always in the opposition. Yes, you are excellent. Until we came. Yes. Let, All right? let, let the national president so, also, also come to talk. <laughs> President, uh, you see, uh, the way forward. The way forward. I've said it. I don't know how many times I will say I it. I'm sure that my mind would... is fixated on what is going on. If the government of Erufai and the former deputy governor, let me see, he's here defending the government, even when he's not deputy governor, and I give him that credit. But I am representing my people, and I know they are plight. And I keep saying, mm. if any government will want, let them take away all rocks, water. Don't give. Don't give anything, because thank God there is tenure. It will pass away. But security is important. And I am saying that our communities are under siege. And, and so the way forward, I have mm -hmm. said it, our mm -hmm. communities are under siege. Mm -hmm. The way forward, most of these communities don't have a voice. People like him, God has given him a voice. You are also one of them. I'm one of them. That is why I'm saying we are the voices that God will use, that we will now speak out the atrocities that are going on across our communities. It is not a we versus them thing. That rhetoric, that is... A rhetoric that, in fact, is false. Because if you have a problem that is plaguing you, mm -hmm. you have a disease, you will not wait to find out who has that disease so that you now have a strategy in place that, okay, I have a disease here. So there is somebody that I must look for so that we can hold our hands together. No. If you have a disease, mm -hmm. cry out. Look for a doctor. Doctor, please, this is where it's aching me, and then let a solution be found. There is injustice in Southern Kaduna. All right. There are atrocities in Southern Kaduna. There is genocide going on in Southern Kaduna as I'm speaking. And truly, if we are not talking that, we have not started. All right. Uh, hello? This is, this is the last call on the show today. Who is on the line? I'm on Ghan, calling from Portacot. Okay, from Portacot. What, yes. what, where would you advise the way forward for the Southern Kaduna yes, I, nation? I feel pain. I feel pain. Go ahead, go ahead. I feel pain, no matter what is happening. Yes. The governor, is sworn, the governor has sworn an oath to protect life and property, irrespective of tribe or creed. They should double effort in protecting life from all assembly. Mm -hmm. What is happening in Kaduna is a lot to stop its presidential ambition. We should redouble its effort in protecting life and property. If I have if I'm half my way, are you going to do politics? Because nobody will like what is happening. The governor should do something. Life and property should be protected. 
Okay. Thank you so much for calling. I, I, I am sure that uh, his his excellency is 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 having an ear, yes, hello? Hello? Okay. So, uh, so as I was saying, the, yes. the way forward to, to my brother, if the governor still has their yeah, ears, please. The killings are too much. Our people are under siege. They are littered all around Kaduna. Let me tell you one community called Galway. On the way to Brunigwari, these criminals went and chased them, chased the men out, and left the daughters and the wives and took over and turned them into sex slaves. They stayed there for over two weeks, dehumanizing a community. Mm. Another community, you know, Badna, they were invaded on the 6th of January. 58 members of that community were kidnapped one night. They were taken to the forest. They stayed there for one month, one day. Not a word from the state government. So if he is part of all these things, if he knows that he advises the governor, Southern Kaduna lives matter. Remember when there was a killing in Igabi local government, mm -hmm. where it is Hausa Fulani community, the governor quickly went there and apologized and said, oh, I have not protected you enough. But I have told you that there are more than 50 communities. In fact, in Kaduru alone, over 50,000 people that have been displaced. Not a word, not a visit to know how they are living. Okay. Now, I wanted to ask him, he advised me, let me also ask him a question. Right. He said he has been part of everything that the government did on that when he was deputy governor. There is an exclusive community called Laduga. It was established in 1997 as a grazing reserve. You know a grazing reserve mm -hmm. is just for grazing of animals, no human development. It was 33,000 hectares of land that was taken without compensation. Now, under their own administration, within that, those four years, it was surreptitiously increased to 74,000 hectares. Mm. And it's exclusively for Fulani people. And the land is of the natives. No compensation. Now, the biggest development, big bridges are being done in that place. Mm -hmm. Road networks, which is supposed to be a grazing reserve. So I want him to tell us if he was also part of that decision. I, 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 would, I would allow His Excellency to respond to that quickly so that we can, we, we can wrap up. But mainly, mainly, uh, when we keep bringing up issues and issues These are the and issues, issues that are disturbing the people. Let me tell yes. you, the people out there, and like I said, Southern Kaduna Lives Kaduna. Matter. He has mentioned Black Lives Matter. Yes. One man, one man yes. was killed. The whole world stood still because people rose up to say, this is wrong. But thousands of people have been displaced. Hundreds of them are being killed. And nobody is rising up to say, this is wrong. Why can't Southern Kaduna lives matter? Yes, this, it, 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 the issue is, yes, Southern Kaduna lives matter. So but that question, if, the leaders, if the leaders of the Southern Kaduna people and their prominent sons cannot sit down here and agree and say, this is what we ought to do and do, and you are just bringing up issues, he brings up and defends himself, that is not the essence of why I said, let's come sit down here and discuss. I'm sorry I'm talking like this, but Your Excellency, I, I, I give you just one minute mm. to recap everything so that I can roll out this program. What is the final way forward? I know you have spoken quite extensively. You have also spoken no, uh, quite I, extensively. I, I think I have spoken extensively um, concerning the administration I served. Um, from the calls I've gotten here, mm. it is clear that um, It is difficult to actually get people to understand me. I, I have two options. Either to take it that I am not a good persuader, I, I am not good in persuasion, or indeed I'm wrong. Uh, I have served for 25 years mm. in politics. 
I've done a lot, and people are acknowledge it, for reasons, maybe because of what is happening, which pains all of us. Mm. I happen to have served under a time like this, where not only Kaduna State, but the nation is bleeding, including the president's own state, which is what some of us foresaw, and we are giving a national solution to the whole thing. But be that as it may, I want to use this forum to do two things. One is to say to the people of Southern Kaduna that to the extent that I cannot convince them, going by, going by the calls, going by what I've had, my memoirs are being written, that is for the records, but be, judging from what people are saying, yes. there is lack of confidence in what I am saying. I will do two things. One, I will apologize for trying to defend what I know to the extent that I cannot convince my people. The second thing is, politics is not, for me, the ultimate. I have issues. I have issues with my faith. I have issues to settle with God. 25 years has taken off my time from what I ought to do. I will use this opportunity to ask that the people of God should pray for me because I think moving out of this studio mm. I'll take a bow from partisan politics. I have done that before. I've been pressurized to come back. By the grace of God I think this time it will be different. I will continue however to give my advice if sought. But I do understand that my association with this political party, with this government, at this point in time, when insecurity is so, is, is ravaging the entire country, including my own place, I understand that it is the most Herculean task, you know, to give reasons why we should do a detour and think differently. I therefore want to tell everybody that I'm sorry um, for all that has happened and that, like I said, moving out of this place, I'll look at a, a different direction. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. And uh, National President. Well, like I said in the beginning, as I sit here, there are tears in my heart for what is happening across our communities. I wish the world will know. I wish we will have more voices that will be raised to point out the atrocities going on in our communities. Our people cannot go to their farms. They cannot go to harvest. Their children cannot go to school. Medicare is not there. And they have not wronged anybody. They don't know what they have done. They are rural dwellers. And whenever I see us doing these debates, elitist debates, I say, has he solved the problem? It has not. The whole thing is about our humanity. Leadership is about humanity. And that is the way I've taken it. We did not sit here to display our capacities of debate, no. But I, representing the Southern Kaduna people, and he, from the government side, we are brothers. But the problem that we have is that injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. And it behoves on all of us when we see the colors of injustice, we call it by its name. And I pray, just like Steve Farah wrote, it is not how strong you have walked on the way. It is not how much you stumble. 
It is not how much, but let us pray that we finish strong. I pray that we'll do that. All right. And uh, from this end, I would like to cap up this way. It takes a great mind to say, I am sorry. I do pray that those who, by one reason or the other, missed what they are supposed to do and they didn't do it well, and they say they are sorry, their sorry should be noted and accepted. And where we are getting it wrong, let us try and pick up more information. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Let us seek knowledge and understand what is happening with us. And then we can take quality decision with the Lord God Almighty leading us. From this end, on behalf of everyone who made it possible for us to come your way this night, I'd say have a good night. We'll see you next time on another edition of National Talk.